Louis Comfort Tiffany was an American painter and glassmaker. He was a son of the famed jeweler Charles Louis Tiffany, also an American jeweler. He studied under private tutors in both New York and Paris. George Innes and Samuel Coleman were from New York, while Leon Bailey was from Paris. He started as an oil and watercolor painter before discovering his passion for glass manipulation in the mid-1870s. In 1878, Tiffany, along with several colleagues, founded a glassmaking company in Queens, New York, named Louis Comfort Tiffany and Associated American Artist, until disagreements with business partners caused the company to close in the mid-1880s. He died in New York City in 1933. Louis Tiffany became internationally renowned in the early 1890s for creating a type of glass he named Fabreau, known for its vibrant and iridescent coloring. This discovery of glasswork helped to secure his status as a world leader in glass production, as well as being regarded as a pioneer of the Art Nouveau movement. This is an oil painting by Louis Tiffany called River Sunset. It doesn't have a year that I could find, um, but I really like the use of color in this one. Um, you can tell with the sunset itself, you know, it's very bright yellow. You can tell the texture of the actual oil paint itself, which I thought was interesting. It looks like it's in uh, like Arabia or India or some place that's very tropical or sandy, kind of desert-like. Um, you can find this piece at Baradoff Galleries in Portland, Maine. This is another oil painting by Louis Tiffany. It's called Logia at Laurelton Hall. I couldn't find a year, but I really enjoy the use of color, and you can actually tell where the light source is coming from, which I thought was extremely interesting with this painting. The blues are very vibrant. The gate is really vibrant too. You can see it with its blue and the greens and the subtle colors really, really meld together very well. This piece is called Lamp the Dragon Thorns. It was made in 1910. The shade itself is made from stained glass while the top and base are made from bronze. This is Louis Tiffany's Wisteria Lamp. It was made in 1901. The shade is stained febrile glass and the base is bronze. This is a black opal diamond and enamel necklace made by Louis Tiffany in 1900. And is a good example of the diversity in which Louis Tiffany used his skills. This is the Tiffany Yellow Diamond in Bird on a Rock. It was made in 1879. The diamond was discovered in Kimberley Mine in South Africa in 1877. The original uncut weight of the diamond was 287.42 carats or 57.484 grams, making it one of the largest yellow diamonds ever discovered. The diamond was cut into a cushion shape, then later cut again into a modified antique cushion brilliant reducing the diamond to 128.54 carats, or 25.108 grams, and it was cut by George Frederick Koontz. The jewel was later mounted and can be found on permanent display on the main floor of Tiffany's famed Fifth Avenue store in New York. This piece is Louis Tiffany's River of Life. It's a stained glass window made of febrile glass, it was made from 1923 to 1924 and can be found in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. This is the Iris and Birch Landscape. Uh, it was made in 1908 with several glass as well. Um, you can actually buy replicas of this particular uh, piece um, online and um, People who do glasswork still these days, they copy um, Tiffany's uh, method of making glasswork and can give you a replica if you wish to have one. This piece is Wooded Landscape. Uh, it was made in 1905, also with Fevril glass. 
I think this best represents what Louis Tiffany did because he did most of his work with Fevre glass and with glass in general. Um, and as far as this window goes, it can be found in the Houston Museum of Fine Arts Collection in Houston, Texas.